joined by Olivia here at the booth, uh, Dell Technologies. My guys, we've got five guys here at the show, uh -huh. tell me that this is the one thing that they're more excited about than anything else at Supercompute. We've got five hype men, awesome. I know, right. well, I know you do now. So tell us <laughs> what we've got, because I know we saw this uh, rack controller at DTW, but now we're seeing it in a more final version, right, or yep. closer to shipping. But you've got a new CDU in here, you've got a, a switch with liquid cooling. Walk us through this stack. Yeah, totally. So this is a small version of the large rack that you'll see elsewhere in our booth. So it is 12 OU quarter height. We don't actually sell this mini rack, but for demonstration Everybody purposes, wants this now. Everyone they usually, wants it now, I know. That's what happens, you go to a trade show, you show one mini rack and everyone's after this thing. After but it, yeah. The, but before you say you can't have this, this for the edge is still pretty sick with this collection of equipment. But anyway, carry anyway. on. So we'll, we'll take it from the top. We have two um, M7725. These are AMD-based systems, liquid-cooled CPU. Uh, this is, we announced this as well at Supercompute. It's the PowerSwitch Z9964FL. So it is a liquid-cooled switch, and it has native bus bar connection, so ORV3-based design. Moving on down, this is what Brian alluded to, the integrated rack controller, and it right. is actually live on, powered on, in this mini rack for the show. Um, and this provides comprehensive leak detection at the rack level. So we still have the internal server level leak detection, um, but this, what we'll show you at the back, uh, detects leaks via a rope sensor. And for the big, for the big NVL racks, yes. the leak detection starts to get a lot more critical. It's not just the fittings, it's not just the CPUs and everything else. There's all these other places where you could accumulate fluid. Yep, and that's where we put the rope sensor at strategic touch points where you would, you know, want to protect against any potential fluid okay. there. Yep. And then this fella. And then this, well, oh, before we get one? to the, yeah, oh, we skip, you, skip, you skip the 33 skip kilowatt it. power shelf uh, here. So this is part of the disaggregated power distribution for the rack. You can pull one out. Rather robust power supplies. It's heavy too. And then the final, last but not least, this is the Dell PowerPool Rack Mounted Coolant Distribution Unit, or RCDU. So it provides up to 160 kilowatts of cooling capacity for an in-rack deployment. So. This is your first Dell branded CDU, yep, right? Yeah, first Dell branded CDU, yep. So all of this together, you're showing this micro version of what rack scale monitoring can look like. Yep. What do we have on the back side of this thing? Because that's back. where it gets exciting. Yes. So this is where it gets exciting and where why we have the IRC turned on. So we're actually going to demonstrate how leaks are detected right. at the rack level. Um, we are not using PG25. This is uh, rubbing alcohol for the <laughs> sake of the demo. Uh, so just use your imagination for us. Okay. Um, so what we're looking out here for is we're going to drop some of this on the leak rope. So this is actually what would be uh, positioned throughout the rack. So this is cabled to your your monitor now. Yes, and so it's cabled we'll, up. Yep. So we'll simulate what would this would be around the system or in a drip pan or other yes. places. Okay. And this valve right here is what's gonna go off and close once the IRC recognizes through the um, conductivity of the leak rope right. itself that a leak occurred. Uh, and at the same time, we'll show you the console to where the alerting is go taking place. All right, um, simulate all right, our leak. We're ready. We gotta drip it on there. And so you'd have this valve if you had an in row CDU deployment. Um, for the demo's sake, we have it here. Oh, there it goes. Oh, Vince, that's what we've been waiting for. Don't miss that shot. Okay, so this is simulating now the actual closure of the loop so that we don't continue to yes. lose fluid. So you have no more fluid going to the rack itself. Again, this would be if you had an in-row CDU, so a CDU that provides coolant to multiple right. racks. Um, if, it, if you had an in-rack deployment with this CDU, this valve shut off would be a pump control operation inside the device itself. So but, what else do we have to do, though, within OpenManage or the other Dell tools to, we've done this, but now we've got servers that are still up. We need to shut them down, too. Yes. So OME, so while the valve shutoff is controlled by the integrated rack controller, at the same time, an event has been triggered with OME, right. and the default action would be a graceful shutdown of the compute in the rack, but that's a configurable policy. And that's something that's kind of new to these liquid-cooled systems. Like, everyone rushed to put liquid in their, their, their deployments because we had to deal with the heat, but the operational side's been lagging. So this really addresses a lot of those operational concerns of what happens when a, a pressurized system will eventually have a problem at scale. Rare, so, so, yeah. Right, but this 
mitigates a lot of those concerns and the fear that some have over liquid loops in their in their data center. And we kept it in the same console that our customers are familiar with. Right, so let's with. take a look so at let's that. Take a look. Yeah. So as you can see here, in response to the leak that I triggered, we have the status, leaks alerted. Um, so this is the IRC's GUI itself, and then we also have Open Manage Enterprise, so you can see the device state turn to critical. And this is where you can configure alerts as well, so SMP trap forwarding, you can get an SMS message as well. Um, and this is where you can see our event, IRC detected a leak, you right. see the service tag, the valve policy, and the IRC's closed the valve, um, okay. and then we're waiting for the sensor to dry off. So, And this is where you would also be able to physically reopen the valve too. So we can do that once we've cleared the leak. Within the software you can do that? Yes, well, we can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So now we just need to wait a second yeah, so we can press the button. Off. All right, so this is an important step. So. We've seen, we've cleared the leak, we've addressed it, it's dried out, but right. now we actually want the data set administrator to actually physically go to the rack and acknowledge we've addressed the leak so we okay. can put the device back up. So we go here and on the front we've got two amber lights. What do we do here? All right, so this is where when people say don't press the button, now I'm letting you press the button. Well, so you, wait, can, you press the There's center. two buttons. Wait, wait, you're so gonna go all that the, way and this, not push it? You got it, you can do the honors. What? This one? So that's the device information, so that's telling us our device status is critical. Right. This is the leak alarm, so you acknowledging. All right, our leak is clear, our rope is dry, we're good to go. And then we've got to reopen the valve, so how do we do that? We do that through the uh, IRC? Device configuration. All right, so if you hit here, we see valve one, it's right. okay. If you hit action. All right. You, you Excuse can do me, I was scrolling I, I just so to see sorry. if there was more information. <laughs> <laughs> Vince, ready to open Vince, it? Vince, be ready. Wait, you got to get my finger pushing the button. And then you got to quickly There's one go more. It's going to be an apply button. Oh, yeah, okay. sorry. All right, turn it on. I like how you have to tell me to hit that because you don't think I'm going to notice. <laughs> Making sure you can read. <laughs> okay, so we hit open, hit apply, and then, oh, look then, at that. Back in business. You just saved our mini data center. All right, so I can see I can see why the guys were so excited about this because you're showing a practical deployment yep. of one of the biggest concerns data center administrators have when bringing liquid into their their labs or their their data centers. And this whole building of I don't know how many exhibitors there are, but almost half seem to be something relating to like liquid cooling. cooling technology. It's the only way we're going to really be able to do the de these things at density, at high density scales. You've got the uh, NVL rack over there with the rear door heat exchanger and all the other things that, that this is part of and the advancements that the Dell's making in liquid cooling are Absolutely. amazing. And you, you brought up the uh, enclosed rear door heat exchanger. I, I didn't mention it's all part of the demo, but this device is actually what helps you view telemetry for the enclosed rear door heat exchanger as well, so you can kind of optimize the function of that, whether it's temperature, humidity, pressure, things like that. So, yeah. so this is just a little, mini, so version a little mini version of what Dell's doing at scale. We'll go take a look at that too, so you can see what that looks like. Is the it's uh, got much more gravitas. Yes. I mean, it is bigger than, than this little thing. But fundamentally, Dell is solving a, a lot of problems in the data center, liquid cooling. They've got a, a great leadership position there. Definitely worth checking out for any scale, rack scale or even something smaller, to get up to speed on what Dell's doing with liquid cooling.